It's Chef Frank here. Hey, we're back. Chef Frank here. How you doing? Listen, tomorrow is a big dinner day with family and, and, and pets and, and friends. It's Easter Sunday. It's the weekend. And we're going to a dinner party. Rhonda and I, we're going to be with our parents and our brother and sister and our niece and nephew. And, you know, when people are asked or when they volunteer to bring something to a dinner, sometimes people want to do really simple things like they just want to pick up a fruit platter or a vegetable platter or a chips and dip. <clears throat> hey, that's cool. If you're making your offerings, that's cool. But sometimes it's not that difficult to step it up just a little bit, like just to uh, do something uh, uh, out of the ordinary, if you will. And so I'm going to do one of my favorite items to bring is our charcuterie board. Now our charcuterie board is a board that's made up of, of cooked meats, cheeses, vegetables, fruits, nuts, crackers, and spreads. Now that being said, you can be as creative as you want when putting together your board. It's based on your like, but if you have at least three or four of those items, you have your style of a charcuterie board, okay? Check them out on Google, uh, look at some pictures, get some ideas. Now what I did today, because the, the boards that I have in my house, they're really for like cooking, like I'm making a stir fry literally right now, so I have a lot of my house boards that I use when I'm doing IG, cooking things, but I went to one of my favorite stores, I went to Ross's. Ross's is a, it's like a little a discount store, if you will. They have clothing and the little kitchen section shoes. And I bought three really cool size boards here. And the board that I want to use for tomorrow's dinner is not going to be a lot of people. I'm going to use my large board. This will serve as the foundation for the charcuterie board. So with this, after I sanitize it, by the way, these boards are really good. They're good with knives as well. So even when it's done, I have more cutting boards in my, in my kitchen to cook for my family or to do uh, lives on in, uh, Instagram and YouTube. Definitely for my YouTube community, but they're good cutting boards. So I got my foundation. Now, what kind of meats do you want to use? Tomorrow, I'm going to be using some a nice cured, un, a, uncured Genoa salami. You see it right over there. I'm also going to be using just a couple of different things I'm going to be also using for my wife. She loves a turkey pepperoni. Now listen, you don't have to cook this stuff from scratch and cure it yourself. You don't got to do that today. They make all this stuff already ready. You can find it within your price range. So I'm going to have salami, the turkey, uh, pepperoni. Also, I love the prosciutto ham. That's also going to be the third meat on our charcuterie board and the fourth meat Ready for this? I love some nice smoked salmon. So that's going on as well. I know my nephew, Justin, loves smoked salmon. So we're gonna enjoy this on that charcuterie board. So you see, we're gonna have four meats. Now with the meats on the board, you want them sliced up. Maybe have a third, two thirds of the meats already sliced. So it's a grab and go style for your guests. You don't want them wasting a lot of time cutting or hacking your meat. You want to control the flow, the tempo, how things sit up on the crackers and all the other things. So pre-cut some of these items so they're ready to just grab and go. So there you have the four meats we're using. Now you also want to pick some cheeses. Now cheeses are a thing. Cheeses are a, they are like, some people just have wine and cheese parties. Some people just have uh, different cheese and cracker parties, cheeses from all over the world. You go to your supermarket, you go to a big box store, you can find all kinds of cheeses. Tomorrow, I'm using three cheeses. And listen, if you're doing crackers, I'll get to the crackers in a second, make sure your cheeses are either spreadable or cut to size so you can actually pair them with the meats and the crackers to make it little hors d'oeuvres, if you will. We're using a goat cheese. It's a hibiscus, hibiscus berry goat cheese tomorrow. Also, we're going to be using a Vermont, Vermont creamy goat cheese as well. Spreadable, gourmet, different. And the third cheese I'm using tomorrow will be your basic sharp, sharp cheddar spreadable cheese. So there you have the meats. Now you have the cheeses. We're going to be doing two different types of breads as well. You can do breads, we can do crackers tomorrow. I'm using the sociable crackers as one. 
also a gluten-free option as well. Rhonda likes to maintain gluten-free. So we have two options here, really nice crackers, thin, they go well, they pair well with spreads and meats. So there's the crackers. We're also going to have, we talked about the cheeses, let's talk about something sweet for the palate as well, right? Like a little bit of apricot spread there. You can find any jams, jellies, and spreads. We're gonna have one flavor tomorrow, and that's going to be it right over there. Can you see that, baby? There you go, right there. Now, with that, you also wanna have some fruit and some vegetables as well. We're doing both. I'm gonna do some grapes. We got a whole bunch of these in the refrigerator downstairs. I'm gonna have a little pile of grapes downstairs. Love those. Also, I'm gonna have some artichoke your marinated delicious artichokes there and I'm gonna do some asparagus I'm gonna blanch it in hot water there's the asparagus right there there you go I'm gonna blanch this and once it's blanched I'm gonna shock it in cold water it's called the blanch and shock process blanch is when it goes in the hot Shock is when it goes in the cold and it stops the cooking process. Once it's shocked, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna cut the roots off there, I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna cut them into thirds, even thirds. Put them in a bag, put some seasoned olive oil in there, seal the bag and refrigerate them overnight for like a cold marinade. It's going to give these things such a nice flavor. It's going to be the olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little pepper, cold marinade. They're gonna be cut up on the charcuterie board as well. Next, we're gonna be having another type of vegetable. So you have the asparagus there, you saw the grapes. I'm gonna be sauteing and also cold marinating some mushrooms as well to go with the artichoke and some nice sliced pre-packaged beets. Lastly, you have to have some kind of nuts on the board as well. So we're using some almonds we're using some sunflower seeds now that sounds like a lot of food remember the board is not going to be jammed i'll put pictures of the board tomorrow in our youtube community post you're going to see what they look like if you want to see mine you can also like i said see them on google we're going to have these little dishes that you can assemble on the board as well of various sizes for your different dips and spreads like that. I like the meat to be like the showcase of the board. You're going to see how I'm going to have the meat showcase in the middle. The cheeses may be on three of the um, outside corners. Your vegetables and fruits building up that board in the different items like uh, some of the other dipping sauces and cheese inside the bowls to have just a nice sit around social, talk about the food, talk about life, talk about Easter type of deal tomorrow. That is how I am doing the charcuterie board. You'll see pictures. I don't know how you wanna build yours up, but remember you need three key components. Smoke to cured meats, okay? Some type of nuts and carbohydrates and some type of fruit or vegetable. Throw your cheeses in there and you can do your own thing, all right? That's the charcuterie board. You'll see that tomorrow. Thanks for watching. I'm making a shrimp stir fry tonight. A quick hack for you real quick. We're using, listen, if you buy fresh shrimp, you're under the time gun to cook that stuff early. I'm using a frozen product, a frozen shrimp. I'm making a shrimp and a chicken stir fry. I have some frozen chicken breasts as well as food hack over here. Now, this is gonna make it fresh inside the wok. You see the wok back there? Instead of microwaving your chicken and shrimp, if it's a frozen product. You can also run it under hot water. I'm actually boiling mine on just a nice little simmer back here. I have shrimp over here. I have the chicken over there. Once it's cooked, it's gonna be warm and soft and tender. I will slice those up and add it to the stir fry right away. The concoction of vegetables and the oils that I use, it's gonna taste as if it's fresh. We get to save money using frozen products. Don't always buy fresh. Don't always put yourself under the pressure to cook. If you run out of time, if it's frozen, you have more time. This is Chef Frank, HospitalityRockstars.com. To all of our new subscribers, 
Welcome to the channel. We're so glad you joined us. Please stay with us. We have a big trip coming up. We're going overseas in the next couple of weeks. We have more food hacks coming. One of our subscribers, I believe his name was Dylan, he said, please, more food hacks. We'll have more of those coming at you. Stay with us. We love you guys and ladies so much. Thanks for watching our content. Take care. We love you so much. Bye-bye.